Hey, Chris, how we doing, man? Good. How are you doing? Good, bro. What you been up to recently? Yeah, I well, was currently in my uh, third to last semester of college, mostly just trying to stay alive with assignments, working two jobs as well, um, uh, both for university, actually, so take a lot of my time. But in the most recent news for others is a uh, solar eclipse trip up to Vermont that last week was probably Grizz, one of the greatest trips of my life for sure. So that's a very recent development that it's kind of taken over, <laughs> kind of everything in the past week freaking out. So, yeah. 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 I'm surprised with where you're located that you have, like, Vermont is one of the states you haven't been to yet. Oh, I know. It made, honestly, it makes no sense. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Talk about it. Like, it, I'm get it's probably further eclipse. I'm guessing Vermont was right in the line. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, from Virginia, the closest places were Ohio, Niagara Falls, and um, that was kind of like the closest one. So, like, I was like, okay, we'll try for those. If there's clouds, we'll go somewhere else. Um, and then just added up to be, like, northern New York was looking pretty good, so we were going to go there. But then, like, as I got closer, the forecast was changing really quickly. And um, there were, like, a bunch of higher, like, high altitude clouds that, apparently would have like blocked some of the promises of, like some of the key details i was like you know this is only happening the next will be in 20 years so at least in the u.s um i was like it's, it's just worth it to, to go as far as we need to so i ended up being the northeast of vermont like the northeast kingdom i call it was somehow the clearest even though like historically it was like terrible odds <laughs> for having no fuck up but it was just such a cool place to see it um, great time to see the state for the first time too because um, they had just got like a nor'easter that you know like the two foot snow storms they get um, but it was like warming up and there were clear skies so it was like the best of every world and it, and it was an eclipse so it was definitely yeah definitely worth it talk about where were you getting like your like cloud information from like knowing where the clouds are and how that affected details where were you pulling that information from uh, I got from the NOAA.gov, which uh, I forgot this, like National Oceanic something something. <laughs> yeah. uh, but that's like the most up to date, like just straight from, you know, whatever the most relevant. I think it's where the weather you now gets there's from generally too. So I just try to go straight right. by and then no middleman period. Yeah. <laughs> was that just, was that like eclipse focused or do you do that for some of your other landscapes too? Do you like plan it out? Because mm. I, I never, never do. I just am like, I hope it's good, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, not not to that extent, for sure. I mean, it depends on if it's just, like, an astrophile I want to get, potentially. Like, I'll pay a lot of attention to, you know, humidity conditions or, like, visibility, higher clouds, kind of like this. So, like, I have done it before. Um, but those, you know, those aren't nearly as fleeting as the clips. So, those are definitely easier to be like, okay, you know, any of these days will work within the week that the moon isn't too bright, so... Yeah, that's the only other thing. So you would have driven, you would have driven west a bit, and then be like, "Oh shoot, mm -hmm. like let's head north for conditions." So like that made the trip yeah. longer. I'm guessing. Well, actually, we had brought. I think we made the plan to go all the way to Vermont before we left. Um, okay. It was just which part of Vermont it was going to be, which ended up being um, the northeast right. instead of Burlington, which had some cloud cover. From place, so. And also, those areas were getting way more people. Yeah, I mean, kind of never was, but <laughs> it, the traffic was easily the worst I've been in my life. I did right, crazy this time. But, yeah. For that, I'm guessing. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. And like everyone from that area. Yeah. Yeah. I I chillaxed. I didn't have like a camera out or anything. I was just kind of uh, looking, you know, as you're supposed to at least. But um, yeah. how was how was kind of going out and trying to shoot it in a more. Uh, you know professional way like how how was it did you make mistakes uh do you like what you found or how did that all go yeah uh well i've done tons of research beforehand you know trying to figure out the best settings to use sorry um also like i was trying to try a time lapse even though they're supposedly super difficult um and i actually brought two cameras with me uh right them up for my job here at jmu um and that was I thought it was going to be cool to have two cameras on it, like one video, but it just wasn't working for some reason. So I ended up just having my um, 150 to 500. Um, I'm always shooting the Sony, Sony A7 III, and that's um, what I ended up being what I used for like the majority of it. 
Um, I actually also had a 16 stop ND filter, which was super helpful for like everything before the one minute before totality. Basically, it was perfect. You can see this on the spot, you know, every phase. Um, and so yeah, it was, I was at 500 most of the time, just trying to get as much detail as possible. Yeah. Um, only one tripod was working, you know, at least one was. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there it was mostly just like locals from the area of that region in Northeast Vermont, but, um, some people came from pretty far, but I was, I, that's from what I saw me and one other person was shooting and he also put his drone up at one point and I, just, he was like way up the mountain and I didn't have like meeting the guy or anything. And I was scrolling reels the other day and I just like see drone, like our dog is very familiar to where we saw it. And I pulled it up like that's, I saw this drone do that. Like I saw it flying right over me. So I hit him up and like, it's just a cool connect or something like that. And just like have that be like, oh, it's a shared experience. Yeah. You know? Right. Um, right. So that was pretty cool. But yeah, it was, it was a little, it was very challenging and it's just such a, like I said, a very fleeting moment. Like the sun, especially that one, you know, all of those, not really all, but most of those you're seeing are like that one split second after the sun peaks behind because you get like, you know, sun star, no sun flare in it or solar flare or anything. But I did end up getting that, I think of the, after it passed because that kind of adds to like the effect of it. Yeah. But <laughs> keeping it in focus was incredibly difficult. It was so fast moving, especially when you're zooming that much. Um, and the cloud cover was actually... It was so tragic. The clouds had just started moving, like right when it was happening. But luckily, they they, they were these were not like crazy clouds, not like the ones they got in Texas or New York. But um, it was very lucky that they ended up moving like very last minute. So lots of stress that just got immediately just like washed away. <laughs> right. When it was happening, but yeah, yeah, was... yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say like I also take a lot of time to just like enjoy the moment. It was definitely like. There's nothing else like experiencing totality. I'd say that I've experienced at least. So, no, yeah, yeah your shots turn out great um, for sure. Uh, this is freaking sure. awesome. I just saw a lot of, I saw a lot of creative takes on how to present people's eclipse shots. Did you see a few of those? Like how people were yeah. presenting them? Like I saw one in a circle, and I immediately thought of like a clock, and it's kind of mm-hmm. like the eclipse over time i thought that was sick i'm just like how oh, can you yeah. make a how can you make a clip an eclipse unique and then i yeah. that and i'm like oh that's how people did i saw someone put a smiley mm-hmm. face out you know? yeah I saw that too. yeah and everyone's yeah. doing different sun peaks like i see one of yours is more of you know has the sun peaking one of them is more just the you know you got the sun ring around it but um yeah super cool. yeah yeah I, I just try to get um just to, just as many perspectives as they could and just kind of I, I, and one of the posts so far has just been like the, the shot like the moment that's happened I'm currently working on one that's kind of like what you're talking about with like a more creative style to it yeah. so I'm trying to figure out what to make it of exactly but yeah I'll definitely be more of a mini project I've never made anything like that before so it's going to be right you know, a little bit like but... yeah I mean it's 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 easy to play with those just because of the solid black background. So you can literally just throw a solid black background and then like Photoshop right. it in your things a little bit it makes it a little easier to play with Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are you doing back at JMU? Like they're they're media related the positions for for work. Oh yeah, so I have two jobs with them currently. Um, one is more through my program, my field of study. Um, I'm majoring geography here, so um, the department has a magazine that they release. It's been annual at this point. Um, so I do photography for them. I write a bit. I had two articles this year. Uh, and that's just more. Um, keeping with the program, like seeing kind of like sort of marketing the program in a way, but also just keep me, you know, uh, keeping you know, up to date and relevant with whatever's going on. And like found two photo essays so far, which have been pretty cool. Um, yeah, so, so that one's more just like a journalism side uh, gig that I have going on. But my main job is as a university photographer, content marketing assistant. Um, it's the official role is like photography, videography, intern, and that job entails like just basically getting stock of the campus that they can use in any sort of promotional material they post them on social media, which is cool to see your work get out there and have it be something that you don't well receive, like you see, yeah, yeah, 
people are score reposting, but oh, like, oh, it's like that. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, and yeah, so that's what I've been doing. Taking a lot of time, but right. right. Yeah. yeah. Do you like, you like your schoolwork involved with it or is your schoolwork more of your least favorite part of your time at JMU? <laughs> yeah, that, I, it's, I think it's definitely hard to say it's my least favorite part. Um, I do enjoy, like, it is important stuff to know. Like, I'm trying to go potentially into urban planning or something that involves GIS and that's a very, like, you need another technology no matter how hard it is. So I just have to get through it. Um, kind of almost done. So, <laughs> Just have one there. Yeah. Yeah, dude. And photography, like the way you're doing it, I mean it I mean it it's a skill and I would consider it a, a high value skill that you gotta go out of your way to learn, especially when you do it at a level that you do it at. When did that start for you for trying to starting to play with cameras and stuff like that? Mm. Yeah, so I got my first I would say actual camera, um, mission DSLR. Uh, in 2019, I bought that um, just to follow my head, say that to the point, um, and went to the Alps actually because I'm I, my mom knew some friends there. She wanted to visit, so I was like, you know, yeah. I might as well know some places. I I had already been. Um, I didn't know if I was on Instagram at that point, but I've always been fascinated by like the coolest places you can see, the different locations. Mm-hmm. Um, so just lots of that ended up go to Europe and then I mean the, I look back at them now I'm like these are still decent shots like I would take some of these now so I think that was definitely a huge stepping stone into getting just getting into it and like getting me motivated to get better and better and better right like, away as fast as I could yeah, yeah. exactly the whole shit the whole trip was shot in JPEG but you know, you know I'm not... <laughs> yeah well it was a start yeah so, so you you were exploring with that and just kind of as a hobby thing, or were you like, dude, I want to be a photographer all the time now. Like, how do I get to do that, Donner? Or what was photography? How did it play a part in your life? Mm. Honestly, I cannot remember what my like future plans were with necessarily. I feel like it's always just been a way of um, creative expression and just capturing um, places that I'm visiting. I've always been a big fan of travel. My parents travel a lot and like broad places, so like it kind of, you know created the addiction to do that and like being able to capture those moments because i i honestly don't write very much about myself as much as i want to journaling all that um so photography is kind of my photographic journal in the way um so i just you know as much as i can capture places yeah yeah no same same with me i mean if if you have that first desire to get a camera and then you actually go through with it and get that camera and you're actually going places that you're motivated, especially as a beginner, to take photos because you're not going to want to take photos of boring things at the beginning. You're just going to want to take photos of flashy things. Anyways, if you're doing mm-hmm. that and you have a camera by you at all sides, you're naturally mm-hmm. just going to learn that ability of how to take photos. Um, that's exactly. exactly how I learned. Yeah. yeah right Were you also at YouTube University? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, my, my main start was more like gaming side of youtube so i was heavy mm-hmm. in youtube anyways yeah um so i started gaming and, and watching all those groups and posting little you know my own minecraft videos or whatsoever of course. and uh man i i always just finished in media and then randomly i had the desire to like all right business time now like i kind of want to start a business that sounds cool so i did like a 16 year old starting clothing brand type thing and i needed a camera in order to show my mm-hmm. clothes off and that's yeah. how it started and of course i mean i was so adapted to youtube uh that's that's how i learned just how i learned editing and and all that mm-hmm. so um never took a photography class or whatever i just always had one by my side after that point so that was great but um yeah dang man yeah i feel like that's definitely like such a people of art because oh yeah how old are you exactly i feel like 21 I, okay, I'm about to turn 21, so I feel like we're yeah. pretty much... Yeah, yeah, I feel like people, especially of our, yeah. uh, I guess, generation, you know, general age group, it's like you, most people aren't learning this type of filming or this type of photography from classes because they don't really teach it. You know, it's just not like a, as much of a learning discipline. So I feel like now with, you know, the infinite access to it, we can... It's so good we're able to do that and like get to the level we're at. Right, man. 
any any step into like paid work at all when you were when you were uh, younger? Uh, did you try that at out at all? Yeah. So I honestly, even up to now, I other than my two jobs, I have I haven't been as heavy into like you know print selling uh, or like finding other ways to market my work. I do have a print store, but um, the novelty of it kind of warm up after a while, and I feel like I see an update again. Then yeah. try to keep things going, but um, it was mostly just the prints. I did sell a fair amount of those, and um, that was basically it. Although I after that Tamron, um, I used to tag them in a lot of my photos because they, you know, I was like that could be a way of getting recognition. That, especially back then, that was a viable way of like getting account like a larger accounts than those to your account um and i was using lenses so i just type them every post and then after enough of those they just were like we you know like we can see the progression of the work and then they just basically ignited me to be one of their student ambassadors um which was pretty sick so i've been that i still am currently one of those gotten a few projects with them (laughs) at this point so yeah, is it, is it kind of just uh, they toss you products kind of a thing, or or what's the position? Not no, whatever you want to consider it, the knighted position. <laughs> yeah, so the, honestly, it's more of like a year to year thing. I've only done one larger project every year. Uh, when I first got in, though, they wrote an article kind of about my story so far. You know, I you know kind of some of the stories behind my images and uh, what leads me to the compositions that. Uh, and I'm taping and so that was really cool to go right into that they commissioned the photos paying for the art gold and we are all that um and then after that I had to make 15 reels for them last summer so that was kind of a, a summer job of sorts um they had a most of them their story which is a little disappointing you know? <laughs> but, right. um and they weren't incredible because I don't have too much video experience that was my first time actually going getting into it and trying it and i see this footage from uh austin jack both the business podcast you know i'm <laughs> love, love, love. um they were super instrumental in helping with that so um but yeah but <laughs> yeah it's i haven't heard back of them recently i'm actually gonna reach out to them soon because along the route to the eclipse um we used to, i actually have my girlfriend and we stopped at this waterfall <laughs> which ended up um, I lost one of my lenses essentially. It fell through yeah. snowpack, fell in a nice cave. You, you absolutely destroyed that thing. <laughs> Dude, it fell. No, it was tumbling. Yeah, it was tumbling. I should still have to post a, I got a video of my phone to show like how close I could get to it without actually reaching it. It was just like right there. Yeah. But honestly, even if I could have reached it, it, it was, there's no way it survived. It, Hit yeah. so many crucial aspects of the lens and went on really fast. Anyways, uh, so I reached out to them and she'd be like, "Yeah, you, can you help me out anyway?" You know, I don't know. Yeah, because the the main also day to day the job is essentially just taking photos like I already do and then using their using their hashtags, still saying what lenses I use for it like I did that before. So not being much of a change in that front. Uh, but now it's just more of like a formal thing that I do. So. Yeah. Yeah, no, I saw that in your bio. I'm like, what the heck is that? Like, that's sick. That's got to be cool. Yeah, yep, it's been great. Yeah, <laughs> been there for like about two years now. Dude, tell me, tell me about Vermont besides the the Eclipse experience. What else did you do? Yeah, so like I told you, they got two feet of snow um, yeah. just beforehand. So uh, I just wanted to see much of the state as possible in such a small time window. And I'm taking like. 11 and a half hours driving up there um at least as far every this is a whole car camping trip you know <laughs> don't money for any accommodations right now so um yeah just gas money using the car living out of that uh went to i'm going to burlington the capital of montpellier um and i supported like i told you the northeast kingdom area and just seeing a small oh stow as well um yeah, this is my place that I could in the short time. A lot of the roads and the mountains were closed, though, during you know this part of the year because there's still so much snow or right. mud on the road. So they get to see everything 
like as accessible to fall per se, like I've seen, you know, people go and do, but, um, uh, still, I think I would get a taste of what they had to help so. Yeah. Do you like going more on sort of international trips more? Or do you think there's a lot to see here just in the U S too? Like I see you just out and about, like you, you were out and about earlier today, maybe. <laughs> Oh, that was uh, something actually. I yeah, I just posted something. a little late, but yeah, I mean, I when I do something, yeah, no, I I honestly am a huge advocate for like domestic travel, and especially in the U.S. because like there's just so much we have. Now, I don't think a lot of people you honestly realize, especially people who grow up in areas that don't have access to the place. Maybe in the West, like I know plenty of people here in Virginia that I've never been. My girlfriend, example, it's never in the west of Mississippi or sorry, Mississippi, Tennessee. Um, and like that whole world of theirs is not on their radar, but Europe is more like you know, that feels like that is the place they have to go to experience that with it, like you know, mountain experience or you know, quaint villages and stuff like that. But we have so much of that here at home and it's so accessible, so right, right. But all for international travel, of course. Sorry. Oh yeah, I've I've never been out of the U.S. I need to get on that. I might do like a, uh, I don't know, like a solo trip to Greece or something. I don't know. I, I yeah. There's never an excuse to get out of the U.S. Uh, I might actually be there this summer. So what did you say? I might actually be there this summer. So if you if you happen to be going, yeah, sometime in mid June, I might be there. <laughs> but in Greece, yeah, oh. yeah. I'm uh, I'm studying abroad in Malta. <laughs> Yeah, uh, from May to June, and then in mid, like there's a weekend in that where you can travel somewhere. So I might just go to Greece for the ride. Right. What semester are you in again? Uh second semester of my junior year. Oh, okay, I thought you said for some reason you were in your last semester, and you said you're a twenty. No, I'm like what the heck, you're gone no. school guy again? No, no, I'm not twenty one. About to be. About to be twenty one. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Do you? I'm always curious. So I'm gonna toot your horn a little bit, but there's there's a <laughs> There's a tier of photography, and I'm in. I'm a pretty, pretty, pretty amateur. But then there's, and yeah, I take great photo, you know, good compositions, whatever. I'm happy with them. But then there's just like a tier of people above me. There really is, you know. Mm. Can you believe it? Uh, that you just, you know, you, and you're you're one of those people in that tier where just the landscapes are on point, the lighting's on point, blah 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 blah. Uh, and I'm always curious about your workflow. Um, I only use Lightroom. I go in and tweak all my stuff in Lightroom, and then I export, and then it's great is do you do you have photoshop in your workflow or is it just lightroom mm. or maybe you don't use lightroom sorry i'm quick to, <laughs> quick to go there no no he's not the good assumption to make <laughs> yeah that it definitely is the case um yeah i use lightroom for the vast majority of my editing actually my workflow has changed this decent bit in the past um i was a year or so especially before last summer before like the canada trip um so I used to use Lightroom for most of the edits, and I would plug it into um, like or like I think it was Nick Effects, um, Color Effects Pro. Like, I was like, yeah, whatever, because it was a little year ago, but it feels like it was so long. Um, and that would just be for like adding a little contrast in certain areas that wouldn't be specified in um, Lightroom or like you know singled out which was helpful. And this is like a few masks to make it more ethereal looking. And I also used Luminar 4, which at the time was the only software that implemented AI into it, like to actually assist in the photo editing process. Um, so like Adobe obviously isn't revolutionary in terms of like the new stuff they're putting in for um, like industry standard stuff. But there were softwares that were doing like using the you know AI mask and everything beforehand. So, and that just just helps with the workflow so much it speeds everything up um so that was just again like some last adjustments and then i photoshop i only kind of still currently use to remove like dust spots you know unwanted objects that let's kind of distract from the composition or people things like that because it's, it's still obviously the best for thing, especially with the new updates um but yeah that's and, but now currently i only use slightly remove photoshop so yeah, dude, I, I just quit to assume that people, when they're just so good looking, I'm just like, they had to have done something in Photoshop to just make it just mm. finish off a little bit more, but every mm. single person I talked to, another one that was on here was Gavin Britton. You probably, I would assume you probably run into his work at some point. Yeah, I, I think that sounds familiar. 
he's another guy in your realm that I'm just like, there's no way that they only get these photos for Lightroom. They just look so good. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's definitely a lot I still could learn and still go into, but, um, and honestly, I know how to, like, women are not, sorry, I can just, uh, spike it. Yeah. Um, like, women do, women do awesome masking and Photoshop is a big thing that I know a lot of, uh, professionals do, um, that can look great, I think, but I also feel like, in a way, that, like, can separate the more natural feeling from a more, like, post-process feeling, so I feel like the level, the the amount I'm and that's why kind of why I dropped Luminar color effects because like they were really cool and really powerful and some of my older images do like when we're dreaming here like um Alice World or whatever but like I'm I'm more I'm like more satisfied with my own work when it's just lighter honestly because everything you do is in there you know and like if, if to someone who's also in photography then knowing that's kind of a cool thing because like you could also do that if he's like mess around enough with the masking a lot so. yeah. Right. yeah i was heavy on you know when you first get in the light room as a beginner you know, you know it's fun to touch stuff and and make things different sliders and make it at all look vintagey or dreamy or whatever mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. after a few years especially when i wasn't saving my raws i wasn't saving my raws for a little bit so i just had mm. massive weirdly edited photos saved <laughs> um and i'm just like i don't like looking back at these so ever yeah. since then i've just been kind of it, uh, valuing more of a realist approach because then i yeah. always can go back at it and be like i can appreciate this photo you know what i mean like so exactly I definitely i definitely agree with that but on another take this is what i heard from someone that was kind of cool um ben scar oh yeah uh, of course you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, I edit based on how the place made me feel, not how the place looked. And mm-hmm. I'm like, well, that's that's sick. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, our, our assumption is then it's fake or, you know, or whatever. Some people's assumption. I don't care how anyone edits or if it's real or not or if they add something in or not. Art is art, whatever. But mm-hmm. um, that, was, that was a cool take on... on you know, maybe over editing a photo. I'm like, that sounds, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. No, I could definitely see him making that boy do. <laughs> Dude, his work is, is so sick. Have you seen his recent projects at all? Like on his uh, NFT space and all that? Or Yeah. Yeah. Actually, so yeah, I was following that. I've followed him for uh, probably like over four years at this point. Honestly, so it's, I've seen this whole, you know, projection trajectory. Yeah, NFTs, that's a whole thing we could talk about. Honestly, I feel like it's a good podcast discussion honestly, because that yeah that was um an interesting time <laughs> on this reality especially and twitter yeah. you know. um but yeah i think it, it's cool what he's done with his work and he's i think like he, I, for what it seems like he's been able to be pretty successful with it and like that's a pretty solid community to be in um especially i think he goes to nyu so it's you know that's a scene to be in but um, uh, NFTs to me were definitely more of a, a red flag of sorts for me to personally get into just the way it was just suddenly like everything shifted so quickly everyone was like you know this is what you have to do you have to get off Instagram go on Twitter start using the you know NFT profile pics and everything and uh, I feel like at the time I probably could have Sorry about it because I was using Clubhouse, which are you familiar with? Yep, that's where I met Ben. So, uh, oh yeah, I've also yeah. been following him for probably over four years now because 2020 was club when Clubhouse was really prevalent. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I feel like during that time, that was like to me at least peak Instagram peak, like especially as the photography app because all the groups were more photography focused. I was in one where, um, you know, Cody Conk on Instagram. Oh my head. Okay. Uh he ran it and they they would have like some legitimate photographers on it regularly that like I looked up to and like they would just be in the room, you could talk to them about whatever. Um and you would like you would just share your recent Instagram post and to, like give the story, give the background, whatever. Um and that has been really cool because then all these photographers I like to would see your work, they would comment, like give you critiques on it. Um and it also ended up like 
you know, the argument of the time would pick up when something would get pretty heavy handed engagement like that. So that was like the time in my work when you get, you know, show like sport pages everywhere. Like it was like actually being marketed, which was nice by the algorithm. Um, but I feel like once NFTs like entered the scene, people were like, okay, well now the photography can be, I, okay. To be fair though, at the time reels had already kind of already started to creep up and you know, yeah. video was taking yeah. over. So there was the need, like people felt like they had to do that somehow. Here's an opportunity for quick commodity in the end of the game, you know, considering what we know now and the current state of it. But yeah, it's definitely an interesting topic. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, 2020, yeah. Now that you say it, it was the peak time for me too. That is, that is mm-hmm. where I'm like, I have nothing to do. I'm going to meet as many people as possible. So like, you know, and that was like, you probably heard of the motivational guy like Gary Vaynerchuk. He's like, DM 100 people a day. So there's just a little <laughs> bit of that. But also it was just like just naturally coming across people's work. So I was like in this weird sort of creative video scene. So if I saw someone's creative video, I'm like, yo, that's dope, bro. Where are you from? Mm. Dude. And then uh, that got onto Clubhouse and then mm. and those guys. And of course, yeah, that's kind of where Reels started up and NFTs started up. And, and yeah, NFTs, we know from the start that 99. Nine nine percent of them are gonna be useless, but you know maybe that point one percent will exactly. pioneer through and, and make that scene thrive. So uh, yeah, I had a good time talking to him. It was he's he's not he's in a very niche part of the NFT scene, which is like creative art, you know, right. mm-hmm. which I feel like art even in real life is kind of a weird scene. So mm-hmm. I don't see it as any different in the NFT space. I'm just kind of, it's already, oh, yeah. it's like the same thing, really. Like you're just, certain people have certain influence on the space and they can sell it for a different amount of price. I feel like that's the same in person too. So it was a little more easier yeah. to grasp to me. But yeah. NFT culture aside, he is, <laughs> his most recent project that I'm like, this is insanely cool, was uh, he flew up uh, a drone you know he's a drone guy i mean i guess he does that quite a bit but he just threw out a shot in in different locations and then he worked with a european composer and composed original music for each drone shot based on how it made him feel when he was there and that I was a project it. okay so that you, you probably wouldn't see it because it's on their nfts and they're on the nft website so he's uh, okay. putting it out on his page okay. so you you go in, you see the listing, and then you like go in and listen to the music, and you're like, "Ooh, that's cool." Mm. And uh, he's just starting to get back into Instagram, but uh, obviously mm. he hopped on Twitter for a while. But yeah, uh, I I just I never thought about you know how cool you can make just a drone shot like that. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll put the look at that. Is that Open Sea? Is that the one? Uh, so it's it's um. It's like innovated a lot. So he kind of described it as there's different marketplaces for different types of pieces. So I couldn't mm-hmm. tell you the exact marketplace on, but it's okay. on his link. It's on his link tree. Okay. Um, if you looked at that, but, let's check it out. Let's say, yeah. yeah. I mean, as an inspiration thing, and I and I just got done watching Oppenheimer for the second time after the book to him. So I'm just like, yo, right. original music pieces. This is sick, man. Yeah, that's that's the way they're on my head. Yeah. Yeah. Not honestly. If I had gone into it at the time, I feel like there was, I had some cool ideas for things I could have done, but I, I feel like I, if it had happened now, I feel like now we've had more of a creative vision for that. Thing. Right. Right. One thing I learned is it's, he spends all of his time in that space. And so like, yeah, yeah. He, he sells those pieces for that amount of money, but like, it's not a money grab. Like he gives into the space. And they give him what he gives back. I mean, that's kind of how that works. And, and, yeah. You know, so, uh, it it was cool to learn that side of it, and maybe it'd be cool if if that space pioneers. I mean, I could see good things from it, but it's definitely in a weird space right now. But, um, yeah, yeah man. Uh, yeah. But socials aside, that was a fun time for social media, and yeah, where I connected with the most people. Uh, Probably yeah. I w- I would have met Austin through one of those chats within a year of 2020 probably which is where i kind of get into your jmu realm of creatives you know yeah it's definitely a little micro niche atmosphere (laughs) um so i know you're not directly involved with with ambient 
have you ever helped out for anything for any type of thing like b buy bts photos or or creative photos or whatever yeah so i've i've done a little bit of work with them um more just just to help them out just to like you know yeah because that, especially with this, the social media um they were just wanting more pictures for the profile like you said you know because that like the initial feed um you know social media reach out to a bunch of people should look as possible so i just allowed them to use some of mine for that um so that um, oh and also they filmed a from winery so i ended up doing some photography for that just yeah. like upon the website yeah. um uh, something gave me drone for that so yeah, yeah. <laughs> bartering <laughs> Yeah, but I think other than that, it's mostly it. Yeah, and you guys met through the the, the adventure club thing, the video adventure club. Video adventure, club, yep. Is exactly. there? Oh, no. Yep. You you meet any other fun people through there, or is it kind of that corner of people that um have mostly been connecting? Yeah, when well, the first so I actually transferred to JMU, and um in the first meeting, um met jack <laughs> but you know jack was also the podcast um and austin for like the second time so it was it was just like very just got right into it um immediately connected with them because they just you know many people know many people you understand the answer and they're both very great people so um we all just kind of connected pretty quick um and yeah there's we have met we have plenty of people at the club that are very great we friend adam who it's really new, kind of similar stuff. Um, uh, as freshman, I know Mason is like this is very creative people, um, that kind of you know gravitate towards this just very niche, uh, type of organization like that. So, yeah, that's a great. For the yeah, you you were on the road trip too, right? Uh, the the seven thousand miler. Yes, sir. Actually, planned most. Of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, that was quite the trip. Three weeks, seven thousand yeah. miles. Pretty what? What was what was your favorite part of that? I think I remember Austin's was definitely being more uh, Jackson Hole and Wyoming area was his most favorite part, which I can see why. It's a beautiful. Yeah, oh, that is a really good question. It does change, honestly. I'm like I'm thinking about different times, or I'll see different photos. Like, oh, that was definitely the spot, but. Um, probably Wind River, Wyoming, I would say as well, because that region is just so remote, so far removed from anything that you're familiar with in the U.S. Um, at least in the U.S. US like it felt more like Alaska or some, you know, far north place. Um, so just being an environment like that was really cool. The Glacial River was insane. Um, are you familiar with the area I'm talking about? It's like a... I've uh, wind, uh... I was at Jackson Hole, but we weren't really anywhere besides there. Wind River, I believe, is more central Wyoming, right? Yeah, it's like southeast of Jackson Hole. So it's like a not, it could be honestly considered the same general region, but right. it brings yeah, that so shit. Generally, I know what you're talking about, but I'm not yeah. an expert on it for sure. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, it's that place is unreal. But uh, going up to Canada, too, was really insane. Like, Banff, obviously, Yoho National Park, just the amount of glacial lakes. That's sure. What was that photo you took in the middle of the road? Uh, what animal was in the middle of the road? Was that uh, like an elk or something? Yeah, it was an elk, exactly. Yeah, that was super lucky. Um, and the initial plan was to shoot that for sunset, but we were on a trail that went, kind of went, went around Jenny Lake at the time, didn't make it back. Um, so we were like, ah, oh, yeah, we missed it. But then the rest, we were about to leave this elk to start kind of start walking along behind the trees. We are like, okay, let's wait and see what you know, happens with this. Um, and then I just walk around the road in the exact type, like in the composition that I mentioned earlier. Um, sorry, the settings locked in, which was super lucky. And, and yeah, got one of the best shits I've ever taken. Yeah, too good to be true, but it was true. Exactly. I know. Honestly, look back, I'm like, that could be Photoshop. <laughs> like, if I saw that and it was not my own, if I didn't have the memory, yeah. it, I couldn't see it that way. I got the animals confused because when I did the pod with with Austin, I uh, I make thumbnails for like I I post like reels throughout the week, you know, about the mm. pod or whatever. And one of them was him standing. I believe it was Wind River. I could be wrong, or that's what it's called, right? Yeah. 
Okay, well, I, I AI generated a bear in the background to see if he would notice. <laughs> he he didn't notice. It's just subtle. So so no, no, uh, if you scroll down to his thumbnails, uh, it's just like him standing, you know, with whatever uh, title, and in the background, it's just a bear standing, staring at him. But dude, that's legendary. I was, I was that was the worry the whole trip. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's the place for it. Sure. Were you ever into, I definitely was hard time, but were you into like photography, YouTube, like more of the personalities of it rather than like how to do it? Mm. That's a good question. I feel like for a time I was very into it. I still do watch a fair amount of photography YouTube, but um, I also the guys that got me into it the most, I would say at the time were, um, I, I can't remember the names. <laughs> That's crazy. What is it? The you nearly know, Australian group of friends. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There's the photography competitions. You know, you already know what I'm talking about. Yeah, those yeah. guys. Yeah. That that just being like their videos, especially the ones where they would just go out and get like maybe just iPhone photos. Yeah. Um, and seeing something, I was like, oh, like you can do this anywhere. So that definitely that was a big step you stuff too. But. Right. I. They're just, they're so casual about it, and they've done it for so long. Uh, for North Border's seventh era. North Border's, yeah, yeah. And then Hayden, I don't remember his last name, but. I think Lynn. Yeah. I, hey, Brown. I remember. <laughs> but, yeah, those were good, and they kind of led, like, the digital photography kind of space, I feel like, especially the creative space. Obviously, Peter McKinnon posted bangers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He did, yeah. My favorite realm of youtube was was mostly film photography youtube um, mm -hmm. i don't know if you ever got into those type of creators uh, oh really yeah, interesting yeah. uh like will i'm sure you oh uh, go ahead i was gonna say like i'm sure uh peter mckinnon seeks you know <laughs> even more so <laughs> yeah. yeah is he doing film yeah i, I saw recently he's been there for almost a year wow like, exclusively i think on portrait yeah wow oh uh, uh, he's really uh He's changed a little bit. He's changed up with that. Significant amounts. <laughs> yeah. Um, he actually got me to stop editing as much. He posted one video and it's like, stop editing this much. You know, it was his old photos with really oranges and poppy colors. And then it was just, mm -hmm. well, he was using a Leica. That always helps you edit a little less because you want to keep that like a look. But he's just like, yeah. mess with your curve a little bit. Make sure it's got a nice contrast. Make sure it's exposed and then call it good. I'm just like, yeah, that looks sick. I'm going to do that because all I really yep. care about is the memory. I don't I don't care mm -hmm. much about tweaking the colors at all or whatever. And now he's doing film, it sounds like. So that's great. But uh, film, film photography for YouTube is fun because it's just like, it's, it's, uh, it's like almost, I don't know, have it on in the background type of vibe. Like they just reward their trip and then they're like, oh, do 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 And then they have their photos playing and it's just a good vibe. Yeah. No, I I, I love that type of content, honestly. Yeah. It's the best. Do you know uh, um, Michael Shane Bloom mentioned? Not off the top of my head. Dang. Okay. He's, he, can, he does that type of vibe, like with just more like letting the photography be the experience type of video. Um, but more the digital side, but yeah, I think he's also getting it. I feel like a lot of landscape photographers who had mostly done digital are kind of transitioning in a way, honestly. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Um, I love you to them too, but yeah, uh, not that gear's too important, but what are you taking with you to make sure you're able to capture all that you're wanting to capture? Obviously, you got your A7 III, uh, what else are you bringing? Yeah, so, um, in terms of like the lenses that I carry, usually just uh, everything from 17 to 500. Um, well, was 17 until I just lost the 17 to 28. <laughs> um, so 28 to 500. Um, and so yeah, I was keeping my, I've had a backpack I've used the past four years or so that's been super reliable, wire resistant, um, fits everything I need to. Um, and honestly, I mean, I've gone through three, three different tribals at this point. I honestly don't even have one that right now. So I've just been running out recently. And yeah, that's all I did. <laughs> when you do have a tripod, are you pretty heavy using it? Or are you mostly running gun? Yeah, I've used to use it all the time. Like uh, even 
honestly, looking back, I'm like, I probably wouldn't had, had to use it that many times, but um, it's a different type of photography, you know. But as if you find a composition, you kind of just stay there. Like, you have to do enough research before good lighting. Um, but I feel like getting a wide, and you can get a variety of compositions with it, obviously, but um, I've just felt it's been really freeing recently. Just you're trying to do wildlife at the same time, or if you're at the higher focal length and you see something quick, like you just won't be able to get that shot if you are kind of locked into it um, as much. So, uh, yeah, depends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I agree. It's just another. I mean, it's another thing to worry about for me that I'm just kind of like, you know, I, I kind of like just holding it and being YOLO with it, which it has its drawbacks. And I know there's people that only shoot on tripods and. If I start shooting my film cameras that I have, I'm definitely going to be shooting on tripods, but there's just something about it. But also, I've just never had a good uh, photo tripod, so that probably is a reason, too, but I'm just mm-hmm. curious. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. What's, uh, what's next for you in, in your journey of this thing called life? Uh, that is, that is the, the ultimate question that I cannot answer, unfortunately. Uh, well, I mean, at least short term, um, I told him something around them all to the summer. Um, right after that, I'm working for the Nature Conservancy, doing like land management with them. Uh, so I'm working outside the rest of the summer. Hopefully, that I can create some sort of connections. I can look for something longer term after graduation, but I also don't know yet. <laughs> I have my head in the many pot, so hopefully, something that combines as many of them as possible. Right. Right. Because what is what is a geology degree? You talked about kind of what jobs that brings you but what can you refresh me on that what would you be looking at yeah yeah so with the geography degree it's geography yeah now geology yeah, yeah i've done it everyone yeah. all that sure yeah um yeah there's like two main tracks at least with our program you can go one is more environment focused so like if you want to work for the national park service nature conservancy or service that type of thing uh, or the land management side and I am very interested in that so I'm doing that I'm also kind of dual concentrating to also get the uh, more technical side with AJS um, and that's that opens up a whole different field of work for, for most local government organizations urban planning um, cartography you know National Geographic all that stuff so um, having both those together I feel like really helpful and then combining photography into it um, then you drill mapping for most of the stuff. So it's just a cool way to, you know, fuse as many, as many, as many just as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I did. What do you mean by geo mapping? Uh, for the drone stuff? Is that what you're Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the... Oh, okay. I know exactly what you're talking about, but go ahead and explain it. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so you need drone surveillance for, and you land that images, which are the ones that are used to construct, like, you know, Google Earth, Google Maps. Um, and then that, that's also the data that's used um, in cartography. It's like, you know, they need, like, imperative data. And, you know, GPS is everywhere. So you basically just need to kind of lock in um, specific images for specific places and then use that data um, with different layers and then that can create all sorts of different things. So, yeah. Um, just, it's sort of more like a graphic design combined with, you know, coding all these different things to kind of create one image and some data and all these different sources and stuff. So. What's the benefit to an individual for doing like the geo, like, cause Google needs people to take photos of like, like what's the benefit for the individual? I ask you a question. Um, you mean in terms of like their personal benefit, or yeah, why would they want to go out and do it besides like mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. helping you go out? Oh, I see. Uh, I mean, probably just to, you have to travel everywhere. This is you're doing this yeah. review. Like you literally get to go right on pretty much everywhere. You've, I've seen some in like uh, get some Zimbabwe. This guy like walked isn't like entire miles and miles. Like you, you can just do that so um, I feel like just having your images your captures be like world canon essentially <laughs> like 
as you can access that yeah. I, I would that would get me to do it yeah mm-hmm. for sure yeah I, I had a i'm full-time like i don't know like i do socials for businesses partner with them and do their stuff or whatever mm. um but i'm to the point where i'll say yes to one-time work too i'm not that busy or making enough to where i'm denying that stuff like that but mm-hmm. That always happens. I don't know why. I don't know what the heck that is. If I don't know if you saw it on the screen. But I got a message and some East Coast company was partnering with an Iowa company, which is where I'm yeah, you you asked you already know where I'm from. From Iowa. Right. Cool. Um mm-hmm. and they said, Hey, we looked up this town photographer. Like that was their search term. And it was a town like two hours from me that's not even in my field of you know, where I work out of. So I don't know how I came up, but good for Google. <laughs> That's good. Um, they reach yeah. out and they're like, hey, uh, we have six or seven points that we need photos from so that we can plug them into our software so we can generate images for uh, wind turbines uh, and where they would be placed so that we can present it to people that decide if that's going to go through or not. Mm. And I'm like, cool uh that's nice obviously sony a7 III doesn't have the metadata that's helpful with that so i said i could do it and then i quickly realized shoot i'm gonna have to be really janky with this mm-hmm. so i uh it was a and the reason i say that is you needed to take the photo but you also needed to graph you know your your latitude longitude your pan angle or pan angle and then also this angle as well and like obviously you know that our cameras don't have that right off the bat so i janked up some iphone apps and did estimates for some of them (laughs) but uh it was cool it was just like a different type of photography uh i went in i sent in exactly what they wanted you know the millimeter they wanted or whatever and then Mm -hmm. i emailed it to them and then on in that moment, they emailed me 10 minutes later, okay, you're good to go, it plugged in well, or it didn't plug in well, move for a second, and, uh, mm. uh, you know, fix it or whatever. So this is really unique. And mm. I quickly realized it was even less creative than I thought it would be. Like, there is literally zero creativity and zero professional photography involved. Like, mm. I... I sent in a photo and they said, hey, this photo is too large for our program. Can you reduce the file size of it? I'm like, what? It's like, <laughs> so it was kind of, it was funny, but uh, that was my closest, uh, it was really cool, but that was my closest uh, experience to like more uh, geography, ge- ge- geotagging <laughs> type experience kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's sick. Though. I've actually never heard of that. Yeah, me it's neither. Can be. Yeah, but well, it was literally I just got paid to drive around and and email a guy every few minutes with a with a photo, and uh, it's been a while since I've been in that area. But there's always weird things if you have your name out on the internet and say that you do photography. Yeah, that was, yeah, was just one that literally got pulled from Google, like a hundred percent. Like I didn't do anything. Really? It literally, just like, hey, we found you from this. We're ready <laughs> to pay you if you want to do it. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> Red, or should we? Yeah, yeah. I just missed my website actually, so hopefully that somehow ends up happening. Yeah, well, yeah. How long has it been out? Because I don't, I don't remember it being in your bio. Um, uh, it's been like two weeks or so. That's part of a recent development. Yeah, just use Squarespace. Yeah, cool. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's so helpful. Yeah, I always say that right now at this time everyone's like you need a linkedin linkedin's the standard or whatever like Mm -hmm. you need that or whatever but websites are kind of still like it gives you a little bit of an edge a little bit Mm -hmm. oh you have your own website cool like it's getting more popular but like still i feel like it gives you a little bit of an edge so especially you're both yeah both like kind of help each other out a good bit right right so props to you for taking the time to do that how how hard was that for you like to to make that up honestly the software was very easy but the hard part was just flying the files because i'm using my entire portfolio essentially most decent photos i've ever taken i'm trying to put on there so 
Um, no, I was like, good, actually. Um, and that just took forever because I have photos from years and years ago that just weren't organized, you know, never properly stored as they should have been. So I actually ended up losing more files than I thought, like from earlier in my career. I still have like some lower quality versions of them, so they work for website purposes. Anyways, but those, yeah, just the organization behind it was the hardest part for sure. You know? Right. Right. And just having it, to, it's there if it's need to be there, but there's no reason it's there kind of a thing. Yeah. 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 Exactly. It's not a bad reason. It, it, sometimes that reason isn't enough for people to make one, but I think it, mm-hmm. I think everyone, if you have the capability to go out and you have something to show off, you should do it. Why not? Yeah. Absolutely. You never know. Dude, uh, appreciate you for taking the time to come on and say hi. Yeah. No, absolutely. Dude. This is great. It's always nice to talk to other creatives who actually understand on the same wavelength about everything yeah i try to make it as much of a conversation as possible Mm -hmm. one of the reasons i i do it is i just think it's good for people that maybe haven't stepped toward you know uh something they want to try like maybe photography could be an example or something like that it just Mm -hmm. They get to hear the, the the problems, maybe, or the successes of other people their age. I just feel like that's valuable. So I'm just like, all right, I already have these conversations privately. Might as well freaking record them. They're the same, you know, so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Appreciate that, man. But uh, uh, let me know if you see anything. It'll be good to talk to you soon, man. Yeah, absolutely. See you. Peace.